Well, back again out in the garage. Not quite as cold today. Uh, the back, the frame's been about 24 hours without any paint on it, so the surface has probably got contaminated. So we're going to rub it down with a special pad, a fine, uh, like a, a pan scouring pad, really. I'll show you what I mean. This is what I've got. It's very much like a, a pan scouring pad. Comes in a pack of three from Halfords. We've got coarse, which is for de-rusting, for removing rust, and the green pad, which is not quite as not quite as coarse. And there's a grey pad used for the f finishing down of the primer coat between coats. Just takes the nibs off the primer. But what I'm using at this moment is the the purple the course to get any film of rust off the paint. Sorry, off the frame. So gloves on, we give it a good look down with this course pad to get any surface uh, rust off the frame, get it down to a lovely shiny finish all over. So the little sinners, we're going to give the frame a final rub down to get any grease off it. So fire off. Nice clean cloth. Now have a silly thinners, gloves on, wipe over. Alright, don't laugh, spray paint out of a can. But I can't breathe in the other stuff I was going to use, which is two pack, which is highly toxic. I haven't got the breathing apparatus. We've got white, the main parts of the tubes, and we've got the red and blue for the corners, joints of the frame. Okay, so here's the setup for the spraying. I've got the frame and the forks suspended from the garage roof on these elastics, just so I can rotate them. The spray the parts I want to get to, the same with the frame, if I want to I can tilt it, move it backwards and forwards, gives me complete freedom of movement so I won't move all the way around. So before we start any spraying we need to think about health and safety. How are we going to protect ourselves from any hazards that there are from the spray? So what have we got we can use? Well we've got a full face, well a half face, nose, and mouth breathing mask with two canisters canister filters on the sides okay and these are specifically designed to absorb the fumes that are given off from the type of paint that we're using above that we've got the goggles now the eyes are full of moisture the surface of your eye is covered in a, a nice film of salt solution which is perfect for absorbing gases through into the surface of your eyeball so we need to protect our eyes as well. We've got the tin of white primer we're going to use it's got a little ball bearing inside and we need to shake that up properly for at least five minutes until all the paint is definitely mixed up inside. Now the paint's been stood outside in this uh, cold February British winter for, oh, oh, bloody hell, weeks and weeks and weeks, so it's absolutely freezing. So if you can't go spraying cold paint onto a cold frame, uh, you're going to have disastrous results. So the best thing to do is to warm the paint up first. So I have here, prepared earlier, a jug of, uh, well, it's hot, hot water. Just dump the paint in it and leave it in there for about two minutes and then give it a shake, put it in again for another couple of minutes and take it out and that should have warmed the paint through. So when we spray it, it should dry pretty quick on the frame. In the meantime, while that paint's warming up in the hot water, I'm going to heat the frame up because the frame is going to be the ambient temperature of the garage, which is probably about one degree centigrade or two maybe at the most. So the Warm paint hitting the cold frame isn't going to do any good at all. So I'll heat the frame up so it's nice and warm, 
so when the warm paint hits a warm frame it will dry pretty quick without any runs and uh, we should get a, a better result be able to apply a top coat on top of it uh, quicker and so we'll get the job done a bit faster so I can get out of this bloody garage because it's bloody freezing okay so that's the frame and forks uh, warmed up not hot but uh, it's taking the chill off them the paints nice and warm flowing freer inside what it also means is that when we spray the paint out of the nozzle we get a finer spray of paint with a few blobs in it so there's less finishing work to be undertaken when it's done so we're going to start with the forks now where we need to spray first is we need to spray these intricate areas Okay, the bits that are difficult to get to. Finally, we need to sand down the finished primer coats to an absolutely smooth, rippleless, rippleless finish. So we get a lovely gloss when we put the top coat on. Now this is going to take some time. So I'm going to turn it off and get on with it. The next stage is to finally go over the frame with a, a dry cloth to remove any of those little blobs of paint that have been rubbed off. Right well that's the primer on, white, rubbed down smooth, ready for the top coat. Uh, so for the top coat we're going to employ exactly the same techniques as the primer. That's starting off in the corners, building it up in the corners and then we'll move on to the centre part, the centre sections of the frame and then finish it off. Then once we've got the white base on then we've got the difficult part of getting the colour in in the corners to match the original. Well, I've done the respray, unfortunately not everything went to plan. All the overspray from the spraying settled on my camera. So uh, I had to clean that up before the missus saw it, otherwise I was dead meat. Uh, so I couldn't film the spraying of the frame, otherwise I would just ruined my camera. Well that's the frame painted. All we need to do now is put some transfers on, Harry Hall, and give it a coat of lacquer, but the paint job, I'm really, really pleased. It's come up absolutely superb. All the blends have uh, really, really worked. Let's put the stickers on. These are they, the offending articles, individual vinyl letters, in black stuck on a sheet of paper that you've got to peel off how the hell do you get them off in one strip without having to take individual letters out I'll show you in a minute and this is the results doodars cut out the line of stickers you want Then what you've got to do is carefully peel off all the lettering from around the edge of the letters, which is a bloody, bloody pain in the arse. I'll show you that when it's done. Here we go. Here's one that's working. So peel it off as best you can. Pick out all the bits in the middle. And we need to offer this up to the frame. Please be straight, because if you don't go on straight, it's ruined. Okay, we're on. Stick it down.
and then peel off the masking tape. There it is, there it is, done. As easy as that. There's the sticker that applied, looks pretty good. Next job is to apply some lacquer, same process as before. Warm the paint up, get the frame nice and warm, spray it on. See you when it's done.